For Amanda Knox, 2011 was the year that life began anew, the culmination of four grueling years spent locked away in an Italian prison. Following an appeals court ruling that freed her, Knox returned to the U.S. relieved and thankful. But earlier today came an Italian Supreme Court decision that all but ensures Amanda Knox's long fight for a return to normalcy will rage on. ABC's Neil Karlinski reports. Amanda Knox, 24-year-old Seattle student. Amanda! Even in a case filled with more twists and turns than a Hollywood movie. They condemn Knox, Amanda Marie. Thank you for being there for me. The decision hit like an earthquake. At 2 a.m. back home in Seattle, Amanda Knox, now a 25-year-old college student at the University of Washington, got the news that her life was about to take yet another painful turn. I just spoke with Amanda. She's shocked. She's very sad. She thought this was the end of a, of a nightmare. And, uh, but she's also very strong in the sense that she's willing to fight again. She did all this up to now, so we will continue to fight. It was Italy's highest court, its Supreme Court, that made the stunning reversal. Amanda Knox will face a new trial for murder, though the exact reasons remain unclear and won't be spelled out by the court for another three months. In a statement, Knox said the court's decision was painful and completely unfounded and unfair. No matter what happens, my family and I will face this continuing legal battle as we always have, confident in the truth and with our heads held high. There is no evidence, there never was any evidence, and there never will be any evidence. So they remained cautiously optimistic that even upon this remand to the appellate court, that the same result will occur. She will be determined to be not guilty. One immediate question, how could this happen? After all, Knox famously served four years in an Italian prison for the murder of a college roommate, was freed on appeal in a dramatic and emotion-charged hearing, <laughs> then came home to Seattle a year and a half ago to start a new life, complete with a reported $4 million book deal. I'm really overwhelmed right now. Um, I was looking down from the airplane and it seemed like everything wasn't real. So how can a court in Italy suddenly just change its mind? In this country, once there's a not guilty verdict, the case is over. But in Italy, prosecutors can appeal. And they did appeal. And they won. And the high court effectively said, try this case again. Put simply, the Italian judicial system is very different than our own. Even if she is convicted again, that can be appealed as well. She's worried. She's worried because uh, she doesn't understand. Uh, the, the system here is different from America, and I know there's a lot of concern in America about uh, what's happening here. Uh, I think it's a fair system. It's a fair system. We need to exactly analyze why the court has decided. And after that, perhaps we will be in a position to say something more. Knox came to Perugia to study Italian in 2007. Knox and her former boyfriend were found guilty. Amanda Knox found guilty of murder in Perugia, Italy. They found guilty of sexually assaulting and killing Miss Kircher. It was just weeks after her arrival that Meredith Kircher was brutally killed. Knox and her then boyfriend of just one week, Rafael Selecito, were soon arrested. Overnight, Knox became a murder suspect and international media obsession. In December 2009, they were convicted of murder after a dramatic year-long trial. Knox was sentenced to 26 years in prison, Solecito to 25 years. The verdict devastated her family, which made dozens of overseas trips and spent everything they had, more than a million dollars, fighting the charges anger, disbelief on how a judicial system could even come up with a verdict uh, like this. It's beyond me. This is completely unjust and I'm in complete shock. After a thousand hours in court, 47 months locked in prison, Knox pleaded her case in a last ditch appeal. I'm paying with my life for something I haven't done, she said. I am not what they say I am. In a stunning move, the appeals court agreed, citing shoddy police work and a lack of forensic evidence and throwing out her conviction in an emotionally overwhelming verdict. What's important for me to say is just thank you to everyone who's believed in me, 
who's defended me, who's supported my family. Since her return home, Knox could be seen on the streets of Seattle, getting coffee between creative writing classes. She has a boyfriend and lives in her own apartment. She has plans, too. Amanda Knox wants to make a living as a writer, but that will have to wait. Her life yet again has been put on hold. No matter what happens in this case, I think it's very unlikely that Amanda Knox would be forced to go back to Italy. Amanda Knox's chronicle of her ordeal will be published next month, long before the final chapter of her own real-life drama is anywhere near finished. I'm Neil Karlinski for Nightline in Seattle. So Amanda Knox's memoir, Waiting to be Heard, that'll, that's going to be released April 30th. And ABC News will air her first interview with Diane Sawyer that evening at 10 p.m. Eastern.